Good morning. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for May 10th of 2024. Thank you all for being here today. Um, we'll go ahead and get started with a Trinity breath here and drop into the heart space. Then we'll do some check-ins. All right. So putting your attention to the physical heart where you find your light, your soul's fire. Imagine connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that light, that supporting energy of the earth up through the feet and into the heart. And just allowing yourself to fully ground in with the earth, allowing that energy of the earth to come into every cell of the body. Beautiful. Now then, connecting with you as creator God, as soul, breathing in that light of you into the heart. And the third breath is where you become the conduit, that connection between heaven and earth as you breathe in the energy from earth into the heart through you to creation the energy of creation at the same time into the heart through you and into the earth grounded and connected hey good morning everybody hey christine from oz got to be about the middle of the night there for you hey malik good morning hey cat good to see ya and hey, John from Minnesota. Hey, I'm glad you got to connect with Samson. Hey, Connie from Maine. And Lisa from Colorado. Good morning. All right. So, um, gosh, we have a lot of questions today from the email that we sent out. So, and if you are here live, please do drop your questions on the questions tab. And we will get started here today. All right. Actually, I'll make a couple of announcements first. Um, let's see. Um, we have a new cool little money clip that just came out. I'm sure you guys all saw that. This is the money clip I've been carrying for, I don't know, I 2011 or 2012. Um, God, this thing's been with me forever. Anyway, we have these money clips on the website now. I'm um, just trying to think of anything else cool and new. Um, gosh, the Rainmaker. I know that's one of our questions today. And the Rainmaker I put onto pre order, kind of first come, first serve on that. Um, I'll actually start pouring them here this next week. I have a thing this weekend. Um, but uh, yeah, the the Rainmakers, they were a little harder than I remembered. So I've ruined the first two that I poured. So I'm going to keep those for myself. And man, we updated the Rainmaker too because the water rings have been updated. The coils have been updated. And so the two rainmakers that I messed up, I have one sitting over at my house on top of my um, five gallon water dispenser. And I put a, a crystal, a crystal sphere inside of it yesterday. And man, I tell you what, I did that yesterday morning and just sat intentions with it to bring more light and joy into my space. And I tell you what, it is a lot lighter and brighter there. Um, you know, got all the tools, both the physical and the energetic, but unless you really put them to use, you know, they're just kind of sitting there. So, you know, that's been kind of a, a theme here this past week of people asking about tools and reviving their tools. And basically that just takes your attention with them for you to just sit with them. Actually, I think we have a question on that here today. So 
I'll go ahead and get started with questions. I don't think I have any other announcements. Um, I guess some upcoming events. We will be, um, we have one listed on our website. And actually, let me just pull that up because I don't want to tell you the wrong dates on on what this is. Um, not Stairway to the Stars. Boy, that was quite a while back. Here we go. Upcoming events. So Las Vegas, June 8th and 9th, um, the Integrative Wellness Expo and Conference. And so the Integrative Wellness Expo in Vegas is going to be a pretty good one. Um, they're expecting um, quite a few people, but it is mm, more along the lines of people that are doing um, more in the medical field style, from my understanding. So that should be a really good show. Um, hopefully we'll get some people interested in the chambers there. <sighs> Hey, Dr. Dream. Fantastic of you to join us today. Good to see you. Um, let's see. The other upcoming event that we have is in Santa Cruz, California for the West Coast Dowsing Convention. So if you are interested in dowsing and you live anywhere near California, uh, gosh, that should be a really good event. That one's actually over July 4th. So anyway, around that time, we'll be in Santa Cruz. Um, we have a few other smaller gigs that we will put up onto the website. And hey, Natalie from Ireland. Glad you could join us here this morning or tonight or whenever you are. Um, yeah, we'll get started with questions. I got some Kapal burning. My good buddy Samson brought me some gifts from Mexico, so... That's the smoke in the background. All right, we'll get started with questions here today. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so our first question. Um, when the time comes and you restock the Wings of Talk in the key pendant, can you tell me, since Talk has moved on, is the Wings of Talk pendant still better to use than the key to get rid of entities on the highest levels, both in the home you live and the individual self? including energetic implants. I've heard you go back and forth saying that the key is better for this, but other times the wings of talk. Can you clarify? Yes, so wearing the key pendant, um, you know, the cross-looking copper-plated pendant, which is Untak, the key, it is the Ankh of the now time. That particular pendant is excellent for clearing ghosts, waywards, disincarnate beings, all the same thing. Um, so the key pendant is excellent for crossing over ghosts. Now the wings of talk is, um, you know, this is our original, the lighter gauge version. Um, but the, the updated version of the wings of talk, which is heavier gauges, um, even though talk who is a master healer of the blues. And when he was a part of these tools, he would basically not be here on the human level it was basically he stood with your soul and would assist in that way um so with this whole shift that has occurred in 2019 2020 where a lot of these beings who are he almost all of these beings who are here on this plane are no longer able to be on this plane so talk no longer comes through the wings of talk. But the reason that these beings, the ascended masters, our guides, you know, we can still connect with them. It's not like they're blocked off and gone, but they're just not hanging out on this plane anymore. So the reason for this is because humans have enough consciousness. It is time. It is time to work with our own light. So the wings of talk, the updated version that is coming out in the wings of talk in the wings of talk pendant, the updated version when it's released is 
basically bringing in your light more. It is working with these creation fields that we work with, which is the highest potentials in the nothing space, which is all about bringing in that higher self of you, that master being of you that is the culmination of the wisdom of lifetimes and the soul. So this aspect of you is much more powerful to work with than any outside being. But with that said, the wings of talk is still going to do the work with clearing entities, working with the geopathic, geomagnetic, closing portal vortexes, everything that the wings of talk would do before it still does. It's just that instead of calling in somebody from the outside to hold space, you are bringing in you to help hold that space. And it's nothing you have to do. Um, it's, it's simply, um, yeah, I'm, I, I don't even know. I lost my words, but basically the wings of talk is going to be working exactly the same. It's just that the outside help is you. So anyway, that was um, our first question. And thank you, Zach, for sending that in. Um, energetic implants, yes, the Wings of Talk is really a great one for that. I believe we have a question on that here in a minute, which we will get into more then for the energetic implants. All right, next question. And this one's from Lisa. Hi, Brian. I have the two inch golden fire tensor field generator. And in your literature, I read one piece to hold it and program it with an intention. And in another place, it does not need intention set, that it works on its own energies. Can you clarify? Yes. So the tensor field generators prior to the golden fire generator, those ones definitely would amplify with your intentions into them, the tensor field generators here. So the older tools did not do that, that higher connection with you, like all the newer tools from the golden fire forward. So truly with the golden fire generators and the divine I am, even the harmony anymore, they, they carry your intentions automatically because these tools are bringing in you and your higher self has total awareness, understanding, higher perspectives of what it is that you as the human want, need, desire. And so truly you can just hold that generator. Um, once you've connected with it by just sitting with it for a moment or even just receiving it, you've connected with it. It is yours. It is going to be, um, it's going to be bringing through your light and all those higher intentions of you. Now you can still place your intentions into the golden fire generator. <clears throat> now the golden fire is the first time that we were seeing that, um, whatever you put in for your attention intentions, um, if they're not really in alignment with you, they won't amplify, they won't be carried. So you can still put your intentions into the tensor field generator, the human based intentions of your wants, needs, desires. And if it is in alignment with you, they come through. Now, as my sister used to say, um, the intentions that the human has might not necessarily be what comes through in your highest and best good. Um, it might not look like how you intend it to be. Um, for example, every time I go to twist up a new tool and me as the humans like, Hey, I have this new tool that I really want to create. So I try to create it and it is actually, mm, other parts of me, other higher, well, not higher, other facets of me, of my soul, like the master builder, who's actually the one that's creating the tools. So very rarely does a new tool, when I go to create it, does it ever look like how me as the human wanted it, which is so perfect and divine. 
kind of like with the tensor field generator, you can place your intentions into there and they may not, the intention, what the result is may not be as you saw it, but it is in that highest and best. Um, gosh, I don't know if I did a very good job of explaining that. Um, Lisa, I hope, hopefully I did. Um, going on here, Linda has a question. Um, I love my new silver bracelet, uh, the silver bangle. Wearing both the copper and the silver on the same arm, they seem to energetically complement each other. Would appreciate you sharing on the newest energies in any info the silver bracelet that others are sharing. Um, gosh, I'm not sure if we have testimonials. Um, Amber, my niece, okay, is all the testimonials. I haven't looked here in a couple weeks to see if anybody's wrote any testimonials on that silver bangle, Linda. Um, but we can certainly check there. But otherwise, uh, speaking on the energies of those, that's actually going to be another question coming up here in a moment. So we will tie this in to possibly the next question here on, on the bangles or on that energetic. A uh, question here, what is the field range of the creation field Gaia sphere in the terms of radius diameter? So yeah, that creation field Gaia sphere, this is a smaller prototype. That creation field is the big 12 inch heavy duty one. Amazing Gaia sphere. Um, the creation field on that one, it extends, it covers the size of a house innately but that field will expand. So when your attention comes onto that sphere, it expands out not quite a city block. I mean, you can sit there and hold your intention and attention with any of the spheres and you sit there and imagine using your imagination, visualization, intention from the heart space you can sit with that sphere and expand it out as far as you can fathom. Um, and that's only for while you're holding your attention with it. So the 12 inch Gaia sphere innately, it covers a home and about a quarter of a city block really. And you can expand that out more, but that is the innate field of it. All right. And this question's from, hey, a friend, Megan. Good to hear from you. Sometimes tools seem more powerful when I first interact with them. Do we need to clear them or do anything to support their frequency? So with the tools that we create, especially anything that was created prior to 2020, um, those tools aren't as supportive though we have updated the energetics of the golden light ring or sorry the golden fire ring um in any of the golden fire tools those have been updated but um as far as some of the older tools you know they they just don't hold as a supportive field as anything that we've created since 2020. So like the wisdom energetics, those are phenomenal all the way through the creation field. Um, those are all phenomenal energetics and are something that we will not outgrow. So one of the things could be, Megan, that it could be an older tool that you have that's just not fully in resonance, but you can truly set with your tools and bring them into a higher resonance, which we will talk about here later today. We will do a meditation so that you can revive some of those tools that you have laying around that you don't feel are really in support as much anymore. But one thing too about the tools that when you first get them, there will be this discrepancy in vibration, let's say. Uh, let's just imagine it like that like um, the tool holds a vibration here and you're here. And then once you, so then that discrepancy in those vibrations, you can feel the energy a lot more. But once you, once you have harmonized with that tool and that field, those energies, then you don't feel it as much because there's not as much of a discrepancy between uh, those vibrations. So 
with that said, you know, you never need to clean or clear your tools, but please do, um, we'll jump into a meditation here at the end of 50 questions and, um, see what we can do. So yeah, don't, don't toss your tools yet. And even the ones that were built before 2020, um, we will see what we can do to reconnect with those. Uh, Stephanie, want to know when the Rainmaker will be available? Yes, please do check out the Rainmaker page. I have not updated the page yet uh, as far as the information content, but you can do a pre-order. You can still purchase right now for the Rainmaker. And I'm guessing within a week, within one week, I will be able to fulfill all the orders for Rainmakers. And then I'll have the web page updated as well. All right. I believe this is our last question from, from email. In what situations or use would one recommend the following? The Infinite Light 2.0 Halo, the Infinite Light 2.0 Pendant, and the Mini Activator. So the Halo, the, the new Halo that we have, gosh, using that, anytime all the time is really fantastic um you know i i wear my silver halo whenever i'm at larger shows because it just keeps well what i tell everybody and that's it is that it makes sure that my thoughts are mine i'm not picking up on everybody else's stuff so one it is it is kind of like an empath filter but the halo in the infinite light so the infinite light energetics, I will kind of walk through and explain the infinite light energetics of the infinite light pendant, the bangles, the halo, um, these energetics, uh, the infinities, I'm trying to think if I forgot anything else. So these energetics are the ones that um, the, the infinite light is what we're seeing that creates the infinities, the infinity from your heart to the heart of the earth, of course, from your heart to the heart of creation. But then it goes beyond that. There is an infinity that is created from the mind to the heart of the earth. Now, to me, this is huge. To me, it just kind of shifts thoughts. It shifts your perspective. Um, it brings a lot of peace to the mind. So wearing the halo is really phenomenal for bringing more peace in. Um, but all the infinite light 2.0 tools, again, they're going to be connecting the brain to the earth or the, sorry, the mind to the earth. And they're more connecting the body to soul, to your light. So the, anything in the infinite light are pretty pretty phenomenal and that is our newer energetic there is um a couple of meditations out there that go through that whole um infinity from the mind to the earth and those meditations can be found on that infinite light 2.0 um the infinite light pendant product page uh so then let's see so the infinite light pendant um the pendant is one that the original one would bring in your light more. It's like this brought this blue beam of light. And with that, it acted as a carrier wave for your light. It just allowed in more of your light. Now with this updated version, it is still bringing in your light. But again, it is also creating those infinities from the mind to the earth, the body to soul. Um, so it's, it's doing the same as it did before, but the infinite light pendant is just really a fantastic one to wear all the time. Now, then the last part of the question is what situation use would you recommend for the mini activator? So the mini activator, it's, it's a space holder. Now the mini activator, um, just like the larger version, you know, it creates sacred space. It is restructuring electromagnetics, crossing over ghosts, working the geopathic, geomagnetic lines, all that good stuff. But the mini activator is in that field of the highest potentials. So it is holding a field because the highest potentials is such a peaceful field. Oh my goodness. So it creates that field of peace as well. Um, Oh yeah, the grounding ring inserts are also in the infinite light 2.0. Man, these things are fantastic. 
actually a lot of people wearing the grounding ring inserts as pendants because uh, they just love the feel of that energy so much because it does bring a lot of peace because um, there is, it is like the infinite light 2.0 energetics, but extra grounding that connection from your heart to the heart of the earth um, to that sun of the earth. So the, um, the mini activator, so it is creating sacred space, but how you use it is kind of just set it and forget it, leave it in your space. Um, it just raises the vibration. It shifts the space, but it is also a great tool to sit with in meditation. I mean, you don't have to sit there and hold it, but just being near that space because those have a sphere of influence, you know, about the size of a home, but really when you are close sitting within that field of that mini activator, it really is um, a beautiful, safe, sacred space to be in. <clears throat> All right. Let's see if we had any other questions here. All right. Okay, I don't believe this was a question for 50 Question Friday, so we will answer that one in an email. Um, but actually, basically, I'll just answer that question here because a lot of you might want to know. So I ordered a variety of your tensor rings and wonder if they are interchangeable in their uses. <clears throat> for instance, would the golden fire ring be effective around my laptop and my router to reduce EMFs? Can any of the rings be used as a passive broadcaster with a KRT coil? So the rings are very much interchangeable in what they do for their basic use. So all tensor fields are going to restructure water. They're going to restructure electromagnetics. Some of them are more designed and geared towards water as well as electromagnetics, as well as our connection clearing. So, you know, like the golden fire is absolutely the best for working with um, EMF. And then the wisdom is the best for clearing traumas through lifetimes. <clears throat> and so with, um, with the interchangeable with that, you can use the golden fire, especially you can use for everything, 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 EMF to, um, water, and then can any of the rings be used as a passive broadcaster with a KRT coil? So that's the Betar coils that we create. And actually the, the Betar coils that we create, the ring is very specific to work with the Betar coil. Um, so, you know, we really suggest to use one of those rings that, that comes with the Betar coil. Those are sold separately as well. Um, but you can still use any ring and it's going to amplify that field. It will harmonize the field. Um, and they synergize and work well together because usually with the tensor rings, any other energetics that you add to them, it creates something greater than the sum. I mean, it just, it amplifies everything and they amplify each other usually. So let's see. Hey, Rachel, Rochelle from the Ozarks. Good to see you. Good to see you, Stephanie. Rochelle, I probably, I probably call you a different name every time, Rachel or Rochelle. So my apologies for that. Kind of the worst with names here. Um, Samson, hey, good to see you, my friend. Glad you're here. We're going to jump over to questions on the questions tab side. Uh, JR, what's the difference between the energy of the water grounding ring, the 13 inch ring, and the largest ring? Difference between the Okay, so the the water rings, the, the home set of water rings, we now have a grounding ring in there. That's one of the updates. So the home set of water rings, you guys, are pretty phenomenal. It is the creation field, it's the grounding ring. It is the nothing space and it is the highest potentials, all three nested together. So the difference between the grounding ring for water, our 12 inch grounding ring and our 23 inch practitioner's grounding ring, they are all the exact same energetics. 
Um, there's no difference between them. Now, it is true that you can usually feel, uh, perceive the energetics of a heavier gauge ring than the lighter gauge ring because that is working. It is more here in this physical plane. Um, we just feel it more. But other than that, there is absolutely no difference. The energetics is exactly the same with those rings. Um, Natalie, will the grounding hecaclasp or grounding insoles work if a person has energy implants that prevent grounding? <clears throat> yeah, so interesting. Oh my goodness. So we've had a lot of questions about energetic implants this past day. So we just might have to talk about energetic implants here um, as well. So Natalie... I will get back to you on this question. Let's see. Next question. As I hold my silver bangle above my silver wisdom ring worn over my heart, the energy seems to get denser, heavier when I lower it and bring them close together. And I can feel it get lighter as I move it farther apart. Much, much appreciation for an explanation of what's going on. So let's see. The silver bangle is in that infinite light energetics and then the wisdom ring did we make a silver wisdom ring gosh i don't remember so the wisdom energetics is definitely about the heavier work um and yes when you do bring the two different energetics and that's what we tell people all the time is just play with the different energetics because you might find that something is really phenomenal. So to me, what that feels like, well, no, not what it feels like, what I logically think with this, um, with those two rings and this, it, and what is going on there is that it is, they amplify each other. And I feel that it is just bringing up more of that wisdom energetic, which is all about bringing up those heavier things. So I would suggest keep playing with it and keep using it. And when you do use those together, just have the intention when you bring them together before you feel that heaviness, just make the intention and say, okay, I'm going to release everything that no longer serves me and bring those two together and just sit with it and just feel into the heaviness because as you feel into things, you bring your light, your awareness, and that's what does the work, especially in the wisdom field. It's not the human that does the work of clearing the lifetimes and the traumas through lifetimes. It is your soul, but we simply bring our divine awareness, our light of our soul to these things. Um, and that helps to shift them. So bringing your awareness, just your attention as you're sitting that and feeling into it. Because the thing is, is that these fields, no matter how you mix them together, is never going to create anything that is not in your highest and best. Um, and then... Um, and then also moved on with the same question and saying that I've never played with the tools in that particular way. So yes, please do. We, we definitely encourage you to play with the tools and to just really set and feel in, feel into it. Um, because if things are uncomfortable, well, there's probably a reason for that. Uh, let's see a question. Can you keep the plastic on the copper rings and they still work fine? Yes. So, you know, our rings that we send in the vacuum seal bags, you can totally leave it in the bags. Um, these are quantum fields. They go through the earth for miles. You, you know, you don't, you, you don't need to take off your shoes for the grounding aspect. Um, so yeah, the plastic will not interfere with the tensor fields. Um, because basically the tensor fields are going to harmonize whatever is in there. It's not just going to take that plastic and project it through the field. It is, um, it just bypasses the plastic. So yes, that is perfectly fine to leave them in plastic. <clears throat> 
Uh, let's see. Hey, Samson, could you share more about your experience with the Silver Series water rings? Instantly restructuring water for me is profoundly miraculous. Huh. My experiences with that water ring. Well, I know I use it in almost all my waters. Um, so the two inch water ring to me, everything just tastes sweeter, crisper. Um, you know, truly my favorite water is, is charged with that two inch water ring, the silver water ring. And that really is my, my favorite charged water. And kind of like some people, you know, because the, each of the rings will bring just a slightly, very subtle, different energetics in through the water. And so, you know, using your set of three water rings is going to be different from using your single to use in the Badar coil to using the silver rings. They're going to do, ba they're going to do the same work, but there's just a little bit of a different energetic flavor, if you will, that is brought through the water. And yeah, definitely the silver water rings, my favorite. Um, sorry, I can't give much more qualification on, on that one, but um, you know, cause I do know a lot of people who, just really aren't as fond of using the Badar coil with their water. I guess I've only met a couple of people who just really didn't like the water with the Badar coil. Um, even though with the Badar coil, you can, you know, you can restructure instantly as well. And that's the thing. Restructuring the water instantly is just something that you hold space for. And I believe it is in the water rings that we have a video tutorial to on how to connect with and bring in the spirit of water, Hedica, the consciousness of water. And when you sit with meditation with that water and you bring in the consciousness of the water to itself, hold that space for it to embody itself, that is what can restructure water instantly, is the embodied consciousness of water itself. Um, all right. JR, can you work with the wisdom and creation field in tandem? Is the creation field more powerfully updated than the wisdom wand? Yes, you can totally work with the creation field and the wisdom at the same time. Um, and yes, the creation field wand is our is in the newest energetics. It is the nothing space, the creation field, or, and the highest potentials, which make that creation field. Um, now the wisdom wand again is all about the clearing, doing the work of the clearing, the integrating of lifetimes and traumas. You can still do that with the creation field wand, but it's a different way that you do it. So you can still do that work with the creation field, but it's not as involved with you going in and looking at the things. It is more about you just bringing in your light, holding that space, you being present and embodying your light is really what the creation field is about. The pendants, the wand, because if you can be present to where you embody your light, that does all of the work for you, especially when you're bringing in your light and it knows the things that you are ready to release, that you want to clear, that you want to heal, um, that you want to see change. So there is that aspect of it, of just bringing in your light. The thing is, too, when you do that, sometimes you do have to make a clear conscious choice to no longer carry something, um, to no longer have a reoccurring experience or thought pattern. So sometimes you do still need to do the doing work when you're using the creation field for those things that are persistent, that come up, that you lose patience with that you just want to have it out of your field. But then again, those things will still fade no matter what. And that is true for what we are doing as humanity right now, as we bring in more consciousness and light into our field, into our creation, into our being, it is automatically 
clearing, releasing, integrating, doing all the work already. Um, gosh, I might have ran us around in circles there. Anyway, yes, the creation field is an amazing field, and you can still do the work as you would with the wisdom energetic. Uh, let's see. I bought a Badar coil. Could you ex please, please explain what it does? I use it for amplifying things, like I put a crystal on top or a note of intentions. I think of it as a Rife machine. Is this correct? Yeah, that's totally correct on how to use that Badar coil. Um, it is an amplifier. Um, so the Badar coil, it is it was the precursor to the highest potentials energetics. So within the Badar coil, you can find it creates this golden fountain of light about three feet tall, well, about 18 inches tall. When you bring your awareness to it, it expands about th three feet. And that golden fountain comes out of both sides of that Badar coil. Within that golden fountain of energy, you can see these little rainbow packets, which are higher potentials. And so this truly was the precursor to before we brought through the nothing space and the highest potentials energetics. So the Badar coil is something that, how I've always explained it is that if you have frankincense, let's say, and frankincense has this much potentials of the beautiful things, wonderful things it can do for you. When you put the frankincense onto the Badar coil, you are expanding its abilities to maybe have potentials of this much. Hey, Samson, you got the old uh, chuchacabra going here this morning. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the basics of the Bader coil, but we do have, gosh, there's a bunch of information. I think we might even have a webinar on that one um, under the product page. Uh, Christine, can you please tell me the difference between the creation field wand and the creation field coil pendant you're wearing? So the coil pendant, man, this is my favorite. I've even been sleeping with this thing at nights, and I don't like to sleep with necklaces, but this one I do. Um, so the creation field coil versus the wand. One is that the coil is creating that tube torus, that toroidal field. So when you are wearing the creation field coil, it is just like all of our coil pendants in that it is grounding, connecting, aligning, clearing, puts a field around you um, that just helps to harmonize things within your field. But the creation field coil to me is one that as you're wearing it, you're in the space and you can be present in the moment. And when you can be present and in the moment, Everything just comes to you. You don't have to make choices, go seeking, trying to manifest, whatever. You just be present in the moment, in these fields, and everything comes to you right when you need it. So it shifts the way that we see abundance. Abundance isn't a bunch of money in our bank account and the things that we have. Abundance is Everything is there for you as soon as you need it, not before. When you need it, it is there. That's the new paradigm we're stepping in. And that also includes knowledge. You know, we've been forgetting so many things and people have been having issues with memory for years. You don't need to know all that crap. It all gets brought into wisdom when we begin to integrate the lifetimes, the experiences, even the experiences from this lifetime. We, we then, when we are again, grounded, connected, present within ourselves, all of that knowledge is there. So it's not like we have this vast library and we're genius smarts and we're a walking encyclopedia but the knowledge is there in the moment that you need it. And again, that's with this creation field coil pendant and simply the new paradigm we're stepping in. Now the wand holds a similar space. The wand, you can also use it to run energy with. Other than that, I do not know much about this wand yet. 
And I've been really hoping for some good testimonial feedback from people who do see and understand what the heck is going on with this wand. Because I'm just, I guess I'm not tuned into enough the spaces and places that this works within to really see and understand it. So my silver wand, it's usually passive within my field. I'll still use it to run energy at times. And I'll still use it to connect in meditation. So especially if I'm just all discombobulated, not in heart space, not centered, grounded, none of that. And, you know, when you get into those spaces, it's kind of harder to stop in the moment and come back. I like the silver wand for that or even the wisdom wand because I hold it. I just imagine that aligning, grounding, centering, connecting one breath and I'm there. So that's what I really like the silver wand for is to coming back to presence. Um, but we, you know, obviously you do not need the silver wand to step into your presence, but it, it does help. Um, JR, you're also wearing the grounding insole every, anywhere on the body, not just under the feet. Oh, can you wear the grounding, the grounding ring inserts anywhere? Yes. You know what? Over this past week, we've had so many people talking about how they've been taking those grounding ring insult inserts and they've been wearing them. You know, one person stuck them in their bra and they said that when they're dowsing, I believe it was their dowsing or their friend's dowsing, they were showing that it had like a 90% effectiveness when they were wearing it in their shoes and like a thousand percent effectiveness when they were wearing it near the heart. Um, which is kind of true with most of the tools that, you know, that's why the pendants are so magnificent because when you wear it near the heart, which is the seat of the soul, that is your light that is right there in the heart. And it just helps to expand, amplify all of that, um, uncover it. It's always there. Um, so wearing, so using the grounding ring inserts, you can certainly carry them in the pocket. You can wear them as a pendant under the shirt and the bra. Um, as a matter of fact, we have one lady I heard this morning in a conversation at the studio that she's ordering another set for her feet so she can keep the ones here because it's making such a difference. Um, but yeah, wherever you place them. For me, the grounding ring inserts, um, I don't notice them as much through the day until I bring my awareness to them. And man, when I bring my awareness to them, it is just instant snap back, grounded, connected, aligned again. Uh, let's see, for energy implants, uh, this is from Samson. For energy implants, if someone has an attachment and they walk through a tensor field or ascension pyramid, or place a ring on the finger, what is happening when more light comes in? Um, gosh. Yeah, we really do need to talk about implants. So basically, sometimes when you're working with energetic implants and you know, there was there for a while in the 20 teens that, you know, if I woke up in the morning and I didn't have a new energetic implant, I thought I wasn't growing in consciousness and vibration because as we grow in vibration, frequency, consciousness, light, the energetic implants that we've had that are not in the same vibration really begin to surface because they can't handle being in that vibration. So energetic implants, and a lot of you are like, what the heck are these guys talking about? So energetic implants, um, a lot of times people feel that they're malicious because these energetic implants, and, and that's the thing is that most of these are gone because all the beings that used to play in this plane are no longer allowed to play in this plane as of 2019, 2020. And so these energetic implants that we found, some of them, we, our own selves, 
have placed these energetic implants upon us. So just to give an example, um, I had the sheathing. So it was an energetic sheathing that covered the entire left half of my body. I could not feel energy through the left hand. I could only feel it through the right hand. And usually most people feel energy more at the left, not a rule at all, but just kind of in the majority of people. Um, so once we finally discovered this and we were able to peel this off to clear it, I could feel energy again. Uh, one of the common energetic implants that we've ran into are headbands where people will get this squeezing sensation and it's just, they feel like they got something or a band right around their head. Um, I feel it is an old Atlantean thing who knows where it really came from. But our understanding is, is that we are the ones that put these on ourselves at one time. I've had caps on my head. My sister's had caps. We've had several caps. These were things that we put on ourselves to help limit us, to help to keep us into this denser reality so that we could have the experiences for soul growth and learning. Um, some of these implants actually, as I was speaking earlier, come from beings outside of, you know, they're not incarnate humans. They are other places. And the energetic implants that we've ran into throughout the years have been usually that there's some kind of a measuring device within us. Um, some of these were like false joints. It's almost like you could feel something inside of your arm when you would bend it um, type of thing. And so these energetic implants, most of the times as we raise in frequency and vibration, they don't, they'll show up as an ache or a pain or something of that nature in the physical. Um, and again, I haven't seen them and I haven't had one in years, 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 probably like seven, eight years, maybe has been since I've had energetic implants and eh, probably six or seven years. Um, but as people have been talking about them, how we've always cleared energetic implants is we always had outside assistance for the most part, we would call in Metatron to come in and pull the energetic implants out and do the healing for us. But we are more self-sufficient now. So to work with an energetic implant, realize that you have a choice whether to carry it or not. That's truly what it comes down to. And it is truly that simple. So if you feel like you have that energetic implant, maybe it's something that, you know, you got this strange pain and you're like, what the heck? I don't know what this is. Maybe a doctor can't figure it out or else maybe you just know because you got like this band or whatever, whatever it is in the physical that's coming up. And again, it's really rare anymore. So don't start being like, oh man, I got implants all over me. No, it's pretty rare anymore um, because most of these things have just been going. But if you feel like you have one, go into the heart space, ask your soul to step in and say, hey, I am making a clear conscious choice that this no longer serves me and that I release it. I fully release it. And I allow my light to come in and clear it. <sighs> yep. So do that right now. If you are someone who feels like they have the implant heart space, breath from earth, breath from creation, step into the heart, ask your soul to stand with you. It always is. Make the clear conscious choice that I release this. It is no longer serving me. I hand it to you, soul. I allow the release, the healing, the clearing, the wisdom of this, and then let it go. You know, there are a lot of the tools that will 
clear it too, as Samson was stating there, you know, it just depends on the, on the energetics. Um, because some of these, yeah, that is really what we put into the tools, starting with the harmony ring, um, back in the 20 teens was to help to clear energetic implants. And so that really is built into all of the tools, but sometimes we do need to make a clear conscious choice to not carry them. And so you can use any of the tools to work with them, especially the, especially the wands of just running energy to those places. And that may do it. You may still have to make a clear conscious choice. And then you don't even need a tool at all either to make that clear conscious choice to release it. So anyway, I hope I didn't lose a lot of people here today on this one, but um, <laughs> there's our energetic implants. All right, another question. I have the dragon wand. I don't feel it either. Could you please tell us which way do you hold it? I use it passively. Yeah, the dragon wand, I, I use it passively too. Um, usually I've just, you know, gosh, I kept a dragon wand on my field. I, you know, we sell them with the little clips, the keychains, because I'd always carry my dragon wand with me. I always have one on the motorcycle. And I've, I haven't, mm, I haven't used a dragon wand or carried one with me in probably a year or so. But um, basically, it doesn't matter how you hold the wand. I just usually hold it um, at the base where the infinity and the clasp are, and I'll simply hold it. And to open up that field, I will just be in the heart space. I'll make this giant circle and just imagine that I'm creating this sacred space, this field around me. And then as that field expands out, that's where I see the dragons. Um, you know, a lot of people love the dragon wand for running energy. You know, we've had a lot of testimonials over the years of people doing some pretty phenomenal healing, clearing, release work by using the dragon wand as well, by using it as a wand. Um, two, if you don't feel your tools, make sure you are in the heart space. That is huge. Because when I do a lot of fairs, conventions, expos, when people come to the booth and you know people really aren't feeling the energy when you walk them into the heart space then they can feel the energy so do make sure that you're in the heart as well hey emily would the grounding ring inserts help with foot leg pain and aches for someone who is on their feet all day long most definitely that should so, you know, because really the where you wear the tensor ring, the closer that you have it, the more is helping those areas. Like if you have carpal tunnel or, or uh, arthritis in the hands, <clears throat> we usually suggest wearing something near that, near that wrist, near that space. Um, but the grounding energetic is pretty flipping phenomenal. I mean, we've had a lot of um, feedback plus our own understandings with it our own experiences that that grounding ring sometimes that is all you need for whatever it is that is bothering you whether it is the release of an old trauma experience recurring pattern emotional reaction um to things in the physical especially things in the physical um we see a lot of people just clearing it instantly with the grounding rings so the grounding rings have been pretty fantastic. Um, so yeah, I would sure think that the grounding ring inserts would be very good for people that have foot and leg pain. Um, all right. Let's see. All right. So I think we are at the point here real quick that we will do this meditation. Um, so here we go. Um, if you have some of your tools in front of you right now, um, please, please do grab some of your tools or else you can go back and watch this meditation on YouTube um, when we're complete. 
<clears throat> and I'm not sure what we're going to do, but here we go. We're going to do something. All right, so going into the heart space, taking that breath from the earth into the heart, that breath from creator God, you, into the heart. And that third breath is where you are grounded, connected, and in the heart space. So holding your tools that you wish to update, upgrade. So all of our tools are connected to what we call the etheric templates, the higher dimensional aspects of these tools where we create the tools first and then bring them into the physical through the tensor rings. Mm -hmm. So with those etheric templates, they are very much guarded, protected by this big, beautiful being named Heimdall. So just bringing your awareness to your tool and your awareness to these etheric templates or to that guardian Heimdall. Or you can just ask me, me as the aspect of the master builder is also there with those tools, mm -hmm. however you feel comfortable, but just feel into both the tool and those templates or me or Heimdall. And then your light, your soul is a part of this too. Because truly, it is your light, your soul, your higher soul self, your consciousness that determines what is in your highest and best in these tools at any given moment. So yeah, you are not asking Heimdall or the Etheric Templates or me. <laughs> to reactivate, to re-energize this tool for you. You are asking your light. So this is between you and your soul. And you just ask for whatever is in your highest and best to be brought into this tool for you. Beautiful. And so it is. Yeah, I kind of didn't know how we were going to do that. But yes, it truly is your light that is going to make that shift in that tool for you. And it has all the support of Heimdall, me, the etheric templates, all of that. And again, it's not you know, use the human that says, okay, I want to turn this into a wisdom ring. It might work, but it's more along the lines of you allowing in and trusting everything that comes in, in your highest and best. So anywho, thank you all for being here today. We did a good solid hour today. That's fantastic. So Hopefully we'll see you guys all again here soon in the next couple of weeks. And um, yeah, take care. Happy May. See you soon. <laughs>